The second and third cases we will look at involve oblique incidents, where the incident wave hits the boundary at an angle theta i from the normal to the surface. For these cases, we will need to recall Snell's law. Snell's law has two parts. Firstly, that the reflected wave will propagate at an angle theta r that is equal to theta i but measured on the opposite side of the normal. Secondly, the transmitted wave will also be on the opposite side of the normal from the incident, and its angle will be given by this ratio of sines. Note that in this equation, n1 and n2 are the indices of refraction for the two dielectrics, and they are calculated from the relative permeability and permittivity values, like this. Another thing worth noticing here is that if n1 is greater than n2, there is a possibility for the transmitted angle, theta t, to be greater than 90 degrees. If this happens, it will result in total internal reflection, where the entirety of the wave ends up being reflected into the first medium. For this to happen, n1 has to be greater than n2, and the incident angle, theta i, has to be greater than theta c, the critical angle, which is defined like this.